Okay, here's another one. This is from the Iversons. Um, some questions for the body code. Is it your experience that sometimes there are several underlying imbalances you must search through until you get the root imbalance? And once you've corrected the root imbalance, do the other imbalances usually correct themselves? Well, you know, that's, that's a good question. Sometimes people do have a, a kind of a root imbalance. Um, but, you know, I never really thought of it that way. Uh, when I was working with people, I was always just trying to fix whatever imbalance uh, was showing up at the moment and clearing all of them. And I knew that no matter how sick a person was, if we corrected all of those imbalances that we could find, that the end result of that was that they were going to get well. In almost all cases, they did. Uh, but as far as looking for a root imbalance, well, um, I never really thought of it that way, although I suppose that in a lot of cases there is some kind of a root imbalance. For example, I remember, and sometimes they'll show up in an interesting way. I remember once I had a patient I was working on who had uh, fibromyalgia, and we'd been working with her for a while, a, a number of months, and she had kind of plateaued. She got better to a certain level, and then she kind of stayed at this level. And um, one day she comes in and she tells me that her tailbone is in excruciating pain. And she can't figure out what she can't figure out why she hasn't hurt it she hasn't fallen nothing and all of a sudden boom out of the blue her tailbone just starts killing her and so and in fact she told me she said you know it hasn't hurt like this since I was 16 and I fell on the ice at the skating rink and man it was that it was terrible then and this feels just like that well <laughs> can you see where I'm going with this what happened with her was we had taken off enough layers and unraveled enough imbalances that that old injury, which in her case really was the root, uh, you, could, you could call that the root imbalance, that was the beginning. And she was in her 40s uh, when I was working with her. But that, in that case, really was the root imbalance. Um, and I tested her, and sure enough, what had happened was that old injury had never really been healed right never really healed correctly. And so when we peeled off all those layers, you see, when you're doing this work, it's kind of like doing archaeology. It's like you're peeling off layers and getting back further and further in time a lot of the time with people. Suddenly there was that injury, and it came back uh, full-blown, just like it happened yesterday, uh, because it was time for it to really heal. Isn't that interesting? Uh, really a fascinating phenomenon. And, um, and I've seen that many times with people. So that's another thing you want to kind of be aware of. And, and sometimes that will be what you could call the root imbalance. Here's another question um, from the Iversons. For the pathogen category, is it your experience that there are underlying imbalances or energies that contribute to or cause pathogens to infect the body? Well, that's a great question. You know, one of the things that, uh, that I always used to find with pathogens that would show up really commonly was heavy metals. Heavy metal toxicity will often seem to um, kind of facilitate those. But then, of course, also trapped emotions will facilitate pathogens getting into the body because they will lower the immune system. And, of course, the heart wall itself will lower the immune system dramatically. So when I was in practice, what I would try to do is if a person had a heart wall, and, you know, I don't think I ever saw a person who was really seriously ill, and I saw a lot of those people uh, I don't think I ever saw one of those people who was seriously ill who did not have a heart wall. And, of course, 93% of people have a heart wall anyway. But, um, but it was a, a fascinating thing. What I found is that by, by releasing those emotions in that heart wall, that would, in, that, more than anything else, that would turn on a lot of things in the body. Uh, what I found is when I would do an initial evaluation on somebody and I might find all the organs imbalanced, Okay, every organ, unhappy. I found that if I removed their heart wall and then came back and checked all those, uh, all those imbalances in those organs, a lot of those organs would be balanced again and happy just because that heart wall was taken down. Remember that the heart is an organ that is, uh, well, it's really, I think, the seat of the subconscious mind besides the, the seat of our creativity and the source of our love and everything else. It really is the, uh, really is the core of our being. And so when there's a heart wall, uh, the heart, instead of being able to freely communicate perfectly with all the cells in the body, it's got to send its messages through those layers of negative emotions, like anger and sadness and sorrow and grief and frustration and on and on and on. And so, so one of the things that uh, when you learn the body code, 
what you find is that you can actually test to see um, what percent of the communications from the subconscious mind or from, from the heart are getting through uh, to the rest of the body intact. And if you have a heart wall that has not been worked on at all, that number will typically be below 10%. So less than 10% of the communications from the heart are getting through to all the rest of the body. So that's a really important thing and, um, and one of the big underlying reasons why a lot of things go wrong in the body besides pathogens, but it is a big contributor to that as well. 